as a child, I was very, very adventurous. I never liked staying in one place. So it was moving up and down. It was being naughty as children can be. It was being disciplined also. You know, the older ones always get the backlash of, you know, uh, when we used to, for example, when we travel, and um, I used to get away with a lot of things. But the day my dad, <laughs> you know, changed his mind about spoiling me, they were very excited about that, my older brothers, especially Toyin. So he was like, welcome to my world. Growing up with, uh, I started off in a home with my parents, and it was just me and my uh, younger siblings. I'm the first child. And when I was six, I moved to Ibadan. Uh, it was a transition time in, in my home and then came back from Ibadan to Lagos at uh, seven, and from seven to 15, I grew up in my uncle's house, uh, Chief uh, Dr. Mapu Graham Douglas, and he brought me up in those formative years as well. But at that period, we moved into a home where we had cousins, and it was, I think at one time we counted ourselves, and we were probably 23 in the house. So what you had was a fight for independence, for every single thing we had to just find our way and make our way. Toye is one of the children that impressed me when he was young. Very precocious, no doubt. He would say whatever he feels, no matter what you think about it. So childhood brought rascality, childhood brought discipline, childhood brought independence, childhood brought adventure, and those are things that I remember very, very well. I met um, Toya when we were in university. We've known each other for about 33 years now. He um, was one of the people that took me to a pool party. It was one of my first parties in Unilag. And um, at the party, I was thrown into the pool and he rescued me from drowning. And all through the party, I hung on to him because I didn't want to be thrown in again and that day he made a big impression on my heart. One of the blessings of life is being able to work. Now, the additional blessing to life is family. If you can have a wife and children, then that's great. And so for me, having a wife that understands me, that is there, that knows me, has been the perfect thing. Especially knowing that you can come home and you have peace at home. And that for me has been great. I'm a doctor, an anaesthetist, and I've had to read a lot of books, do a lot of exams. And it's been, it's not a lot of men that would stand by a woman who is, you know, as, who has great aspirations and wants to move on in life, especially in the academic atmosphere. TC has been there for me while I'm taking my exams. You know, sometimes when I'm reading, he'll go into the kitchen, cook up a snack. <laughs> and it's really, I'm like, oh, you don't go into my kitchen and stuff. And he's like, no, baby, don't worry. I've got to do this. You go read your books. And um, he'll look after the kids while I'm doing that. And he's also an ambitious man. So for someone who's out and about doing work and also supporting his wife, making sure she also gets her dreams and aspirations, it's um, amazing. I have three lovely children, uh, a son and two uh, daughters, and each one of them has far excelled anything that I could expect or wish for, or hope for, or pray for. And that is a blessing that any parent would want, that you see in your children a trajectory that goes far beyond you. He's a loving father. He's a very good man. Um, the children actually really have a lot of um, time with him. They actually prefer going to him than coming to me because I'm very, <laughs> I'm probably a bit more harsh on them. He takes time to talk to them. He takes time to listen to their problems. He helps them solve problems. He gets down to the bottom of what's going on and he's really close to them. And I love the way he's, he is with our kids. He's a loving father. So the first thing about faith and the first thing about knowing God is that when you look at it in the right perspective, what it does is it shows you that there is nothing you cannot face, there is no challenge in this world you cannot do. Why? Because you see yourself in the right perspective that this is who you are and God is just awesome, it's just big. Which means that when you are going to face any problem, you know that who you have standing behind you 
is much bigger than any challenge that you have. And that's the kind of perspective that the God perspective has given to me. I met Toye in 2008, and um, it was a church platform. I had gone in to do um, the School of Discipleship, and he was coordinating at the time. And um, when I got in, we had to fill our forms. And when I filled my form, I hadn't done my baptism by immersion and he called me out and maybe one or two other people and said I couldn't join the class, the program, because I had not done my water baptism and I thought, who is this guy? Why is he so strict? My first impression of him was this look, you couldn't really tell his mind and he looked really strict. And then I explained to him that I had done, gone through the program, but was yet to get baptized. And um, he still didn't let me go in. I had to call my pastor, who then gave me clearance and said, um, we're waiting to get um, baptized. Second aspect of it, and I think this is where it becomes greater, is after you now start looking at those problems, then what are you looking at problems for? What's the solution? Why are you there? And you see that it's a people thing. You then begin to understand that the reason why you exist is so that you can impact people's lives. The reason why you, can, why you exist is so that you can make a difference. And the reason why God put you here is that you have a purpose in the lives of people, that your life must matter in their lives and you must make a difference. And I think that's where, that's what I see that God has begun to do in my life as far as people are concerned and my faith on a daily basis is. I remember then my daughters had finished secondary school. At this point, I was um, say divorced, separated. I became a single mother of five, not by choice, but situation, of course. The better option for me was to get out. And um, he, he observed the children that school had started and they weren't in school. And so he Tony asked me why. And I couldn't really give him, talk to him because it was something I was internalizing. And then as months went by, he then asked again. And I said to him, um, you know, I have challenges. It was the first time I would tell him I was a single mother of the five children. And um, he said, oh, why aren't you applying, you know, and all that. At the time, I'd wanted them to go abroad. And so one day he phoned and said, look, I think um, the um, admissions are closing, you know, and all that. What are you doing about the children? And I said, I was waiting on God. And he then asked what applications we had done. At the time, we were doing the US applications, and I sent them to him. He looked at it. And somehow, I think he was following up, but I didn't even know that. So one night, he called and said, when is the closing date? And I told him, I said, you know, Amina, it's really closing, and you have to move. So he dropped the phone and called me back after a while, and he said, look, Amina, I need to take this off you. I'm going to pay for the two children. And I was like, no. We argued a bit and then he said, look, just get it done. And he sent some email to someone in the US and copied me. I read it and he put the two children's names there. But I thought someone is trying to help. Why would he want to do two? I'm not going to leave all my burden to him. And he kept insisting on doing the two. He said, look, you can't choose one over the other. So what are your options? And somehow they didn't get the admission that year. And then he got talking to them. And he said, um, I promise you both that by this time next year, you will be in school. 
And when I think about sacrifice, I, th I see that everybody that has ever done anything great, everybody that has ever changed anything monumental has had to sacrifice majorly. And that aspect that you need to put uh, sacrifice, you need to put others before you first, uh, is something that has shaped me politically and shaped my thinking. So when you think of the great political figures, whether it's Mandela, Gandhi, uh, Kennedy, any one of them here in Nigeria, uh, Aulawa, Tafawa Balewa, any one of them, Zeke, you see that there was a sacrifice that they had put forward. And many of them sacrificed up until death. And so when you take this step, the first thing that comes to mind is that you know immediately that your life is on the line. And it's a serious thing. It's very, very serious. And one of the things that I had to think about, even in this step and this journey moving forward, was that I'm going into a terrain where my life is on the line. And am I willing to put that sacrifice? That's the ultimate sacrifice. And for me, the answer was yes. The minute I could come to terms with that, then I knew that we were already on the path uh, for political history. And that, for me, is what's important. He has quite a number of role models, and it depends on which angle we're looking at. When it comes to business, he looks up to Steve Jobs and Rockefeller. Religious-wise is Daddy Gio, and he does look up to Daddy Gio, and he you know, he, he um, puts him in high esteem. And when it's um, politics and life, it's Mandela. In, in life and in business, you get to a particular point where you have done and you believe that you have achieved as much as you can in that uh, terrain. And I think as far as business is concerned, I pushed the boundary to as far as I could, but I knew that there were many other things that could be done. And one of those things, if you remember right, one of the things that I'd always said is that you, your life has a purpose in impacting others. And how many people can you impact? What can you do? And one of the things that we have seen, uh, that I have seen as far as River State is concerned, Concerned, which is where I've decided to go into, is that we become poorer than we ought to be, less educated than we should be, sicker in terms of physical health than we ought to be. There's so much that has gone down instead of going up, and that is a burden that I no longer can just sit back and watch. Sincerely, when I heard about um, his ambition to be, come to run for governorship, I thought, mm mixed feelings. The world of politics is very dirty. I had mixed feelings. I was happy for him, not for him per se, but for the people. But then I began to think, so what's going to happen? He's going to give up everything and just go. I remember when I called him he, the first time, he was quiet about it. He just said, look, God will lead. It's not of him as the Lord leads. And I remember him saying, oh, we're going to fast for 40 days, starting on the 1st of September to end on the 10th of October. I said, fine, I'll join in the fast. The way I think about it is, if I have succeeded in life, succeeded in business, succeeded as a family man, succeeded in church as a pastor, and I can bring all of those things, succeeded as a philanthropist, if I can bring all of those things to bear, then I'm showing that success is something that has become in inherent in the things that I do. And in that way, you can then translate that into the political arena and begin to succeed where it's most needed. And why is it most needed in this end? you have the ability to impact millions of people. One decision, one thought, one strike of the pen, one policy automatically changes lives for the good or for the bad. Now for me, I believe that if, I, if I've been successful in these things and I can translate that success into politics, then I will be impacting lives positively. If I failed elsewhere and I have no track record of success and then I jump into the political ring, then more likely what you'll be seeing is that I will be translating a, 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 a legacy of failure. But I don't have a legacy of failure, I have a legacy of success, so I might as well just translate that success into politics. One of the things that I discovered in when uh, I used to speak, motivational speaking and all of that, almost immediately as soon as you come out, the first thing that everybody wants is they'll bring a CV to you and they'll say, I need a job, I need a job. It's 
consistent over and over again. And then you sit back and by the time you start speaking to them, you find out that why they need a job is that they just need somewhere to go and get food to eat. Just something to just pay the bills on a daily basis. It has very little to do with what they believe in, what they know they can do and all of that. And so I began to find out that it was more important, even as you're dealing with trying to get people jobs, it was more important to help them discover themselves, discover their passion, discover who they are, what they were created for, give them an idea as to what they can do outside of just day-to-day day uh, day living. And so in doing so, we began to look at the areas with which you can deal with young people, creating them a belief in who they were, help them begin to articulate how they can find themselves, discover themselves. And once you can do that, you push them into a direction where they begin to go out and fend for themselves. And so, started up a foundation called the Neymar Youth Initiative, which essentially was in rebuilding lives. That's the way I just, you know, just take lives and just rebuild them. Broken lives, people who didn't have, who felt that there was no hope, they couldn't get anywhere, they couldn't do anything and just, tweaking them something that give, give them a hope and they began to discover themselves and do that. So we did uh, started investing in young people, uh, investing in uh, the less privileged in society, so those who society did not even give a chance. Sonia is, is a fantastic person. He cares about people and that goes to show, even when we were working together, I remember Tonya carrying my bags for me. He's very humble. Tony Cole is a very, very great man that I've never seen it in his time before, before in my life. He's a calm man, very wonderful man. He helped a lot. I eat because I eat today in my house because of him. He's a selfless uh, personality. He's indeed a generous man. So Tony Cole is a very upright person. Like, if you want to hear the truth, you go to him. That is how I know him. That is how he's very objective. He's very caring, he's very passionate about what he believes in. This man is a man of integrity. He's a man of honor. And he's a man that carries everybody along. And he empower youth. Many times he, I see him or he, uh, he comes around or we go to meet him, I always see some young guys around him. And I'll be wondering that what are these people doing with him? Uh, at times also where we have a, a, a program that uh, you know he needed to attend, instead of him coming with uh, people like himself, he'll be coming with some young young guys around him and he'll be introducing them to me that meet my mentees. So, and uh, it marvels me a lot because people that have this kind of influence that Tony Ko has, uh, Tony Ko is a, is, is, a, is a person that most people read on the pages of newspaper in this country. And uh, you will agree with me also, he's one of the richest men in this country. So uh, people in his caliber are difficult to approach. People in his caliber, you can't find them, you can't meet them, you can't book an appointment to see them. But uh, in his own case, you see him around with people. And uh, that tells you his level of humility. Because you, you see these people that you think that it will be difficult for you to approach. And here, you just seem like that. So I think uh, he's passionate about young people. He has a lot of young mentees that he um, supports. And he brings them home, he talks to them, he takes them around with him when he's working. He shows them what life is about and you know and i also have to get involved as well because they also want to know what marriage is like um, what it's like being married to someone who's as busy as him and having to um, work with and deal with somebody like him Tonya cole is one of my child that i'm very very Proud of. I met Toya in 2012 um, at an interview and from there I, I got to know him a bit more during a mentorship program that I was selected for in 2014. The mentorship program was basically to encourage people in their line of work um, to be resilient, to be hardworking and um, to grow up in their career. 
I met him in the course of work 10 years ago when I used to work for him. I worked for him for nine years actually. And from the point of my interview where I met him up to the day I left the company, he's mentored me all, all along till now. It's been an amazing journey. It's been very uh, insightful. It made me see parts of myself that I perhaps would never had or never have thought that I could unlock. Uh, and um, it's fantastic to, to know that uh, he's actually allowed me to be one of his mentees. Seriously, our meeting with him has been a great improvement. And we have achieved a lot with Mr. Toyin. Then, I didn't know how to promote my farming, my business. I didn't have business idea how to plan a business. But with his help, now, I know how to do business plan, how to market my products, how to promote my farming. I'm so glad. He make us in Cardinal State, Southern Cardinal, most especially Southern Cardinal, we achieve a lot. As somebody from nowhere just come and empower the youth to go to the school, we have trained almost 100 students now in under agriculture training school. It was, I was just sitting, working my farm. I, call, I had a court through my, uh, my village head. I, I need, and they needed to, I say why? He said, it's just a one man that's just come from heaven. We don't even know where it's coming from. He said he want to help people. This man begin like a play like play oh, since 2012, which he will have been opportune. He took us to one of the agriculture training schools. Since he asked us uh, which, what is our occupation, we told him that uh, we are a farmer. He said, we know more about farming. We say no, we are farming based on the heritage and the knowledge we have from the beginning of, from, from our forefathers. He now said, okay, he wants to empower us, introduce us to, to give us more guidance, teach us, take us to the school where we will get more, more knowledge about the farming, which will have been opportune to take, took us for good one year at Levantis Foundation of Nigeria, that is agriculture and training school, to go to one year, in which he help us, they pay us allowances. Our movement today is the one that give us the transport and coming back from the school can give us the transport. Serious, I've never seen a man like him. I've benefited a lot from him. But when he came to our community, um, seriously, we are just, we were afraid because he was a stranger. He's a stranger to us then. So he just introduced us, the youth, to farming system. And that was why he, you know, introduced us to a school, agricultural training school, Dogodawa. And that was where we, we had so many experience on farming. And for now, presently, I can farm some like vegetable, tomatoes. Meeting with him is, a great, uh, is a, indeed a big privilege for me. It's amazing when I have all these young people come to the house and they're so amazing, they're supportive, they love him, he, he actually gives his all to them. He gives a lot in himself when he gives to these um, young people and it's amazing, I love it. And every month, seven, 700 people, every month they refill them. For one month, two times, for one month, two times. This is what they took, more than 15 years. The cook, the go market, go buy everything, come back. Then get one woman, or go where they paid some woman, three women, where they paid them. They will come cook them. They put them for takeaway. Why don't put them for takeaway? Take me I'll carry and go, me and the driver. They'll carry and go give some can when uh, some people went then small small children when mama threw them. You know get baba, you know get mama. They help them also. And some people, some mad people, where then they for calm, plenty. They go help them. So the man they try for that one, they try. Seven seven hundred people. Every month, two places. You resigned. How many Nigerians will resign from such a good seat? Hold on to whatever they're doing before. They will decide they want to go to politics. But, hold on there to the apron string. Look in there. 
Would you be able to do it? Would you be able to concentrate? But to resign. And if it is God that is sending me there, let me concentrate and do it well. To say, I want to go and serve my people. How many? Aren't I a proud mother that he could do that unsolicited? My vision has always been much bigger. It's been bigger in the sense that I have always believed, always believed, first of all, that the continent of Africa can be the greatest continent on earth first. But that for that to happen, Nigeria has to take its rightful place. And Nigeria is a catalyst for, to making Africa great. Nigeria in itself is a catalyst to making the black race great. Now, if we can, so for me, that vision coming back into Nigeria and looking at what Nigerians and who Nigerians are and what we can do is where my story is. My story is in, can we find Nigerians and make Nigerians know who they are, know their rightful place in this world and know that they have a, an obligation, you can call it a divine obligation, but an obligation whatsoever to lead the black race. Because for me, it's very, very plain that if the Nigerian fails, the entire black race fails. If the Nigerian survives, the entire black race survives. And I've seen this happen all over the place, that wherever we go as Nigerians, wherever we go, we excel. And when we excel, everybody looks at us and they say, what? we meet Nigerians. We know that you guys are great. We know that you can do great things. But what is it about your country? Why can your country not be like you? And that for me is the challenge. If they meet us one-on-one -on -one and they know that we can be great, then collectively we should be greater. And I think that that's where we need to go. I think he's genuine. Everything he's saying he will do, uh, he will definitely do. Uh, even based on, if you look at what's happened over the past few weeks when he just came out as, and he's not running uh, your typical campaign, even though the campaigns have not started yet. He's, he's, he's going to every single corner of rural state you know, by himself to see what the people are saying, what they look like, and just to understand them, you know. Um, and I believe that everything he says he will do, not just because of my brother, he will do it. If he cannot, he will not say something and then backtrack on it, you know. I mean, I can say that now, but reality is my kicking, but I believe that he's very passionate and doesn't make empty promises. I want to believe that if the people vote him, which I believe they will vote him, then you can be rest assured that in River State will never remain the same. From what I've seen, um, the kind of programs he has done that I've attended, I know that he cares about the youth, he cares about women, he cares about small children. He's not going to neglect all of them. So I think he's going to be a good governor. I wish I was from Rivers and I wish he was running for my state. I will gladly vote for him any day. The people of Rivers, I mean, you don't know what you have, but you need to actually realize what you have by voting for Tony Cole. I think he's the best candidate that Rivers has ever produced, not even a governor, like the best candidate so far that Rivers in the history of Rivers State. If Mr. Tony Cole becomes governor of Rivers, he shall rest. They are finished. In fact, they have getting a good person. We want him to become a president, sir, not even a river state. Why if Mr. Tony Cole come be become a president in Nigeria today? We give him 90 something percent, 99 percent in the state. Because the youth in himself, we don't even, in fact, he's a wonderful man. That is my son for you, Tony Cole.